Hey Travis kiddos, it's science time. So this week we started talking about sounds and um, how sounds can have different pitch and volume. So we talked about high pitch and low pitch. We talked about loud volumes and quiet volumes, right? So um, high and low pitch, loud and quiet volumes. When are, we're going to extend that a little bit more. I have a story for you. It's called Sounds All Around, and I also have some little science experiments with things that you can find in your home. They're not school items, so um, you should be able to do some of them um, with things you can find around your house. Okay, I found some in my house, so you can too. All right, let's read Sounds All Around. It's written by Wendy Pfeffer and illustrated by Anna Chernyshova. Sounds All Around. Snap your fingers, clap your hands, <laughs> whistle, <whistles> clatter some pans, you're making sounds. Crinkle crunch through dry leaves, splish splash in a puddle. Make happy sounds, sad sounds, scary sounds, mad sounds. Shake a can of marbles. Rattle, rattle, rattle. Shake a can of cheese puffs. Fluff, fluff, fluff. Shake a can of pencils. Clank, clank, clank. Your sounds fill the air. Make more sounds. Woof, sing, la la la, talk. Hello, how are you? Hum, hmm, hmm, hmm. These sounds come out of your mouth, but they start in your throat. Can you make these sounds? Your vocal cords. So here we have a diagram of the parts in um, your mouth thro and throat and face that help make sounds. So we have your nose, your tongue, your trachea, your larynx, and your lungs, which go all the way down here. When you breathe out, air passes from your lungs through your larynx, which vibrates. The vibrations then travel through several air pockets, which change the way they sound, all to create your voice. Hmm. So feel your throat as you sing, talk, or hum. Your fingertips tingle because your vocal cords shake to make sounds. So you put your hand here and you can feel it vibrating. And here we have vocal cords is in um, is a bold word because at the end of the book, this is a nonfiction text, so it has a glossary with um, information and definitions of those bold words. So if you don't know what vocal cords are, you go to the back to the glossary and you can look it up. Vocal cords, the parts of our throat that vibrate when air passes over them, allowing us to make sounds when we talk and sing. So put your hand on your throat and feel it vibrate. They shake back and forth very fast. This is called vibrating, and that makes the air around them vibrate. These vibrations move through the air in waves called sound waves. So we have vibrations and waves. Let's look those up in the glossary too. So vibration, when something moves back and forth very quickly. And sound wave, a special kind of invisible wave that is created when something is vibrating. Hmm, kind of like they explain in the text, huh? Now be quiet. Keep your hand on your throat gently. <laughs> Feel your throat. Your vocal cords are still. They're not vibrating so there is no sound. Hmm, pretty cool. A look inside an ear. So we have another diagram of an ear. So we have your middle ear, your inner ear, your eardrum, your stirrup, anvil, and hammer. So here is how the sound works. First, sound moves through the ear and strikes the eardrum. Then, sound waves cause the eardrum to vibrate, sending the bones in the middle ear into motion. Step three, you hear sound. 
So, so the vibrations um, are how we hear as well. We make sound with vibration and we hear with vibration. Pretty cool. You can't see sound waves, but when they reach your ear, tiny bones in your ear vibrate. Then you hear the sound. Beating a drum makes it vibrate, and then the air around it vibrates. These vibrations ripple through the air. They travel from the drum to your ears, and you hear the sound of the drum. Hmm, pretty cool. Long ago, people used drum sounds to send messages. They beat high sounds, low sounds, fast sounds, and slow sounds. These sounds traveled through the, sorry, traveled through the air from village to village. Different drum beats sent different messages, such as rain clouds are coming, forming, or a new leader has been chosen. So, people still use sounds to send messages. Clapping hands say, good job, right? We clap for people um, in shows, at our pets. <laughs> A knock on the door asks, is anybody home? <laughs> and the siren on a fire truck means get out of the way. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> Animals use sounds to send messages too. A hen clucks to call her chicks. Cluck, cluck, cluck. We've been talking about that too, how animals communicate with each other, sometimes through sound, right? A ruffled grouse makes a drumming sound to attract a mate. Thump. And a howler monkey roars to keep other howlers out of its territory. A howler's roar is one of the loudest animal sounds in the world. No wonder other howlers stay away. Howl! In the dark, a bat avoids an object in its flight path by making a high squeaking sounds. By making high squeaking sounds, its sound waves hit the barn. The sound bounces back. These echoes warn the bat to change direction before it bumps into the barn. And echoes is another word that is in the glossary. It's in bold, so let's check that out. Echo, a sound caused by sound waves bouncing back from a surface to the listener. So we learned about this, how a bat uses sound to um, move around and find its prey. Do you remember what that's called? Mm, let's see if you can remember. A bat finds food using echoes too. Sound waves bounce off insects. In total darkness, a bat can locate six hundred insects an hour by listening for the echoes. This is called echolocation. Sound waves travel through solid ground as well as air. A snake has no ears. To hear, it puts its head on the ground. A bone in its head feels the sound vibrations. They warn the snake that an enemy, maybe a mongoose, lurks nearby. And echolocation is another word in the glossary, which we know what it means now, right? And you might even remember from earlier this year, but echolocation is a way of using echoes to find where objects are located, used by animals such as dolphins and bats. Whoa, so dolphins use it too? Let's hear about how sound vibrates underwater. Sound waves travel through water too. A mother whale can find her baby by sending clicking sounds through the water. When the sound waves bump into her calf, echoes bounce back. The mother whale listens. She hears the echoes and knows where her baby is. So she's using echolocation in the water, right? Pretty cool. Whales and dolphins locate objects by sending sounds through the water, then listening for echoes. People use a device called a sonar to send sounds in water. Oh, sonar is a bold word. Let's check our glossary. So sonar is a way of using echolocation to find where objects are located on the water or underwater. Hmm. When the echoes bounce back, people know how deep the water is. They also discover where submarines, shipwrecks, and schools of fish are. 
Sounds are an important part of our lives. Some sounds, like music, please us. Some sounds, like a jackhammer, annoy us. I know a jackhammer definitely annoys me. Some sounds are quiet. Some are loud. Look at that alarm clock, very loud. How can you measure sounds? You, um, how much you weigh is measured in pounds, maybe ounces or other units of measurement, but we use pounds. How tall you stand is measured in inches for us. And how loud you yell is measured in decibels. Ooh, another bold word. Let's check it out. Decibel is the unit for measuring how loud a sound is. Decibel. So, let's hear about the decibels of different sounds. Whisper. Whispering measures only about 30 decibels. Talk. Hello, how are you? Hi. <laughs> Talking measures about 60 decibels. Yell. Wow! A, a loud yell measures about 85 decibels. Rustling leaves measure only 20 decibels. A vacuum cleaner, 70 decibels. A loud music, 100 decibels. A jackhammer, 130 decibels. A jet engine, 140 decibels. A space rocket is very loud. It measures 200 or more decibels. Wow, that's a lot. Some sounds can really damage your ears, so you should be careful about protecting your ears around loud noises. Luckily, there are many ways to protect your ears, like covering your ears when a fire truck or ambulance drives by, or making sure you don't play music too loudly. People who are close to airplanes or use jackhammers have to be even more careful about protecting their hearing. I usually wear earplugs when I'm in places that are very noisy to help protect my hearing. We live in a world of sounds. Telephones ring, thunder rumbles, water gurgles, birds chirp, bees buzz, friends talk, and we laugh, cry, hiccup, and sigh. Sounds are all around. Keep listening. <laughs> so here we have the glossary and um, some other activities that we can get into another time, but I do want to talk about the um, science experiments that you can do in your home, okay? So um, if you have a glass of water, um, you can tap it with something gently. <laughs> um, now I have a glass, an actual glass. Um, if you wanna try, you could try a glass and a um, plastic cup and see the difference. So I'm gonna, you heard it already when I tapped it with my nail, let's see. Ooh, a little louder with my pencil. You could try something metal gently, of course, we don't wanna be breaking anything. Ooh, even louder with the metal. So if you have something plastic, would it make a louder or quieter sound? Ooh, that's fewer decibels. That one's not as loud, right? Definitely quieter with my plastic bottle here. Hmm. You could also experiment with different levels of water. You could put more water or less water into your cup and see if that makes a difference in how loud or quiet the... Um, the sound is, or even the pitch, maybe it's higher or lower. Hmm. Um, okay, another experiment. You can get a rubber band. Okay, you probably have some of these lying around. Now, I'm gonna um, strum it, or you, if you have someone else to um, pull it with their finger, I'm gonna pull on one side and pluck it. Now be careful, you don't wanna snap it on yourself or someone else, um, but listen, you can hear it, and if I stretch it out, the noise changes. Hmm. The pitch gets a little bit higher as I um, stretch the rubber band more, and the pitch gets a little bit lower as I give it a little more slack and don't pull it as hard, okay? So you can experiment with that, but again, be careful, don't snap yourself with the, with the rubber band. <laughs> um, you can also, if you have a ruler, you can um, 
put that on the edge of a counter. I don't have a ruler, but I could use my pencil and hold it down. You don't want it going flying. And you can kind of flick it on the edge of a table or counter and you hear the vibrations as it bounces back and forth. Okay, um, if you have balloons in your house, you can blow up, put a little rock or a, um, or a bead or a nut inside the balloon, blow it up and tie it, and you can hear it rattling around when you shake it. Or you can hit it and hear um, whatever you put inside, the object moving around inside. Okay, maybe there are plenty of other sounds you can make in your home. Maybe you can experiment um, with loud and quiet noises, with high and low pitch pitch and finding other things in your home that make noise and play around with those. Um, have fun with it and happy learning.